Hi, everybody. Welcome back. This is Mark Lawrence, along with the Las Vegas legend himself, Jim Feist, here on ProLine TV. It's our new network that you're going to come and want to watch almost every day because you're going to learn a lot about sports here on ProLine TV. This is our talking point segment that Jim and I are going to talk about. Just like two good friends in a bar, although I don't drink anymore, <laughs> we'd still be good friends. Uh, <laughs> Jim, I want to ask you a question here. This is on my mind here about the lot's well, been in the news lately here about Deion Sanders and possibly going to become the Dallas Cowboys head coach. What do you make of that? You think that's a realistic possibility? Well, everything's realistic with money. If you put enough money on the table, I'm sure he'd gra grab it. But, you know, a lot of coaches would probably refuse and not be inclined to go there to be the head coach because you know that he's – the, the new the coach is not going to be the coach because Jerry I'm talking about Jerry Jones the owner is the owner general manager and the coach he sort of takes over so I a lot of your big name coaches that really want to coach the team and develop the team are probably going to back away from it unless there's enough money involved that says okay I'll, I'll go there and i'll let jerry do his thing and i'll just do what he tells me to do most of these big name coaches are going to want to be the actual coach and make the decisions and jerry doesn't allow that to happen i agree 100 percent. in fact i don't think this will ever happen because of that reason deon sanders is not going to take orders from anybody he's going <laughs> to want to be the man running the show and the last thing that he'll want to do is have Jerry Jones chirping in his ear about what to do, who to keep, and what trades they should make and all that. There's a lot of other good money out there that Deion Sanders can make, and the people want to make this tie between Deion Sanders and the Dallas Cowboys, former players, so forth. And they can make that all they want. I just don't see this happening for the reason you just mentioned, Jim. You can't have an owner like Jerry Jones is hire a new head coach and ask that new head coach to remain deaf as a new head coach. It's not going to happen with Deion Sanders. <laughs> And when you look at and when you look at what's happening this year, I mean they're a dumpster fire this year, and they really didn't do anything in the off season to really improve themselves. Even though Jerry says we're all in, they're really all out now, and and they overpaid their quarterback. He's a, he's a he's a B or B plus quarterback, and they paid him more money than Mahomes is getting paid, which is kind of ridiculous. They don't have any running game. Their defense is hurting. I mean, there's all kinds of issues there. And this is Jerry making decisions. And you go, you got to go back. What, when was the last time they were in the N N NFC Championship game? 25, 27 years ago? And this is America's team? This, is a bit, this has been a team, even though it's a very expensive, the most valuable team in the NFL, they just haven't lived up to expectations except for 12, 13 wins a year in the regular season. But when it gets to the playoffs, They've fallen apart every, almost every year. Well, I'll tell you how bad it's gotten in Dallas, Jim, is uh, we're going to see this year, probably for the first time in the Jerry Jones era, where the Dallas Cowboys are going to be flexed out of a Sunday night football game this year. <laughs> and they should flex them out. Yeah, and they're going to flex them out, exactly. So that's the handwriting on the wall to me, that perhaps Jerry Jones should maybe turn things over to his son. Uh, you know, he's the vice president of the operation. He knows the program inside and out. But when you start getting fleshed out, you're no longer America's team. You're America's has been. <laughs> Good word. I, I agree <laughs> 100%. Uh, I don't know of any really qualified head coach that would take that job unless they're l looking for a monster payday and just willing to put their ego aside and, and take orders. And and maybe that's what McCarthy did, because, you know, he's not making all the decisions there. No, he's not. Could they bring John Gruden in there? John Gruden would be a, a real big personality. But would John Gruden be willing to work under Jerry Jones? That would be the question. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know him that well to be able to answer that question. He, yeah. I if don't you're think hard enough for money, maybe you do anything. Exactly. So the people in Dallas... We'll have to wait again since back in 1990 when they won a, a, a conference championship game. It's been that long. It's going to be a long, dry spell here, I think, for the foreseeable future of this football team. Jimmy, let's move it over to a real talking point that's real popular, I think, with fans in the National Football League, you and I especially, about NFL head coaches and their over-reliance on analytics. Uh, we saw a lot of this happening uh, Brandon Staley in his days with the Chargers and even a bit before that. But 
even our world, Jimmy, that we handicap in, it's uh, a lot of people are getting over, uh, not indulged, but uh, they're being medicated on analytics. And, you know, <laughs> analytics, it's a, it's if it a doesn't drug. look right, if it doesn't feel right, if it doesn't taste right, it's not right. And analytics are just cold, hard numbers that don't tie into anything. So what are the National Football League head coaches doing when they rely on these analytics about playmaking decisions or going for one or two points or kicking a field goal? Have you got any idea what's what they're they have, process they, have, they have their head in this plastic card and instead of looking at the game. A lot of these head coaches – well, not, I, I don't know if I should say a lot, but the, the, many of these head coaches played football at a very high level. They're very talented. They know the game, blocking, tackling, throwing the ball, running the ball, catching the ball, you know. But when they, they're not using their heads when, when they make these decisions and they're looking. And, you know, in the NFL, they only play 17 regular season games. Not everybody plays into the playoffs. So, some of the teams, they only play the 17 games. And and you're using analytics from a very small sample size. And then you go into the next year, that's 34 games. And then the next year, and two years down the road, it's 68 teams. But the players all change. The coaches all change. I mean, just this year alone, you had 16 offensive and defensive had new, new coaches. Yep. You know, so – Everything is changing, but you're using numbers from then to now. And this, there's in some cases it works, it especially works in trends, much more so than analytics. But you're making decisions based on the wrong things. And when you're using the wrong garbage in, garbage out, that a lot of those numbers are garbage because they don't apply, apply to what you're looking at today with your talent, your schemes. The do every year there's a new rule that they have to address. And so all the new rules are not on that analytics chart that you're looking at. It's, I think it's really silly that we've gotten into this. Not everything is mathematics. Now, if you talked about analytics, say with baseball, 162 games is a very big sample size. Maybe, okay, that's, that's 10 times more games in one year than the NFL plays. So now you start, you're talking about an analytical basis of something with a much larger sample sample size. I think it has more merit, not, but not in football. Well, what happens, what I'm seeing here, Jim, I think what people don't realize is that the metrics they're using, the metrics themselves change from game to game to year to year. And yes. if you have certain situations of us, you know, these plastic sheets that they're looking at, they're telling them what to do, these cheat sheets, supposedly. And, you know, do I go for two on here? What's the score of the game? Go for one, go for two. Well, that stuff all changes because if there's a lot of success going for that, those numbers are going to change. And if there's a lot of failures going for that, those numbers are going to change too. So what happened to the to the proposition at the time that you decided to implement it? I think it's ridiculous. I, it's just an evolving conversation about analytics and people wanting to make their case, their mathematical case. And like I say, if it doesn't look right, if it doesn't feel right, it doesn't taste right. It's not right. I agree. And let me give you a perfect example. If you were at the end of the game and you're going to make the two-point decision of going for two or not going for two, which means you're going to kick, try to kick the extra point and go to overtime. Now, the opposing quarterback is Gardner Minshew. And the opposing head coach is Staley. As opposed to over this game, there's two games we're talking about here, Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes. Do you really want to play an extra period against Andy Reid and Mahomes, or would you rather play it against Minshew and Staley? I think and, and live, probably, live and die on that sheet is what right. you're basically doing. I mean, right. you're looking at the sheet, you're making the decision, not thinking, do I really want to play Patrick Mahomes <laughs> another yeah. quarter? On the road, <laughs> another quarter? Want to do that. Right. You know, I think that I think the venue matters a lot. I think the opponent obviously matters a lot. The score the, in the situation of the game matters a lot. You know, is it is it the third quarter and there's eight minutes to go in the game? Should that reflect whether you go for one or two? It probably should, but it won't because they don't get delve that deep into it. If you're going to delve into analytics, it should get down to the down nitty gritty to that deep. But I don't see it does. 
How about if there was 13 seconds on the clock versus 32 seconds on the clock, and you're going to go for the two, which is going to put you up one, and you're going to win the game. But the quarterback is M Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> and now you're going to give him 38 seconds to go down the field and kick a field goal to beat you. Chances yeah. are he's going to he's going to accomplish that. But go halfway not, down the field, right. Right. I mean, because they're all kicking 50, 55-yard field goals now, right. which is crazy. But they do it, and they're pretty good at it. So you, the decisions are not on that card. They're in no way on God, Brainer. Do you do you let Patrick Mahomes come into the game with time and give him a chance to beat you? I mean, because didn't he beat somebody a couple of years ago with 13 seconds on the clock? <laughs> Wasn't that Buffalo we beat? Oh. <laughs> you know, go back in history. You know, you don't you don't want to give the ball to Aaron Rodgers in his prime, Brett Favre in his prime. Correct. Legends like that. And today it's Patrick Mahomes as the Kansas City Chiefs. And it probably is Lamar Jackson right now, too, as we're speaking, because you don't want the ball in his hands uh, with a chance for him to move that team down the field. He himself can move that team down the field. Yeah, he can do it all by himself. He could. Exactly right. Yes. So, you know, we're going to argue this point forever and probably until things change. But I know one thing that when I'm, when I'm betting a football game and – that I'm trailing seven to nothing and I score and I say, good, I'm back in the game. And I see my team going for two. It's like, Oh no, what are you doing? You're going to the goddamn analytic sheet and you're saying you <laughs> got to go up eight to seven rather than be down seven to six. I think that's horseshit personally. It, it is horseshit. Yes. That, that's the, and that's why it's, a, it's such a great talking point to discuss. And we've seen it. I mean, they make changes. The suits upstairs are making changes in the, I think it's a crazy kickoff rule with, with what they're doing this year, and I wish the hell they'd just go back to what it should be. Play well, we'll, we'll tear that apart on our next talking point about the kickoff rule, Jim, because something needs to happen with that. That's the most insane thing that I've seen the National Football League do in a long, long time. I don't understand it. You can explain it to me perhaps maybe before we get together for another talking point. Absolutely. Next week, let's do it. Let's do it. I hope you enjoyed our little visit, Jim Feist and I, and our Talking Point here on ProLine TV. Stay tuned. We'll be back with more for our next ProLine TV Talking Point.